sometimes you think you're just hearing it, but you're actually hearing it with a special ear. And I'm saying this primarily for the little ones because most adults know this, is that you have two ears on the side of your head, but you also have a very special ear inside here in your heart. And that's the ear that hears stories. Did you know that? A very special thing. Now, when I was a child, um, my books were actually people. The indigenous people, the Nacho Nayak Dun First Nations people did not write. Some were able to read a bit, but most of them didn't write when this was when my grandmother was a little girl. And, um, but they told stories. So every person that you came in contact with, it was like a book because they had lived their life. And so their life is the story. They live their life like the story. So what I'm going to do is today, I'm going to tell you a story and then I'm gonna ask you to just think about this. What did you learn? Did you learn about the emotions in the story? Do you know what an emotion is? An emotion, well, there's a quite a variety of emotions. One of the strongest emotions, of course, that people know about is love. You know when your mom loves you. You know when your friends love you, right? And you know how to be loving to your little baby sister or to your little friends and to be kind. So that's a very strong emotion. So within stories, sometimes you will feel that it'll pull at your heart. Your little ear in your heart will hear the little love, the love story. And another emotion, of course, that we often think about and we're, we're, we're kind of sometimes afraid of it is anger. When you get mad, that's another emotion. That's an emotion that Sometimes it gets away on us and we have to think about the stronger emotion of love, right? So those are two of the emotions we might be thinking about. Another, another emotion is fear. Maybe you're scared of something. And that also comes out in the story. When you hear the story, you might get scared in the story. And that's an emotion. So these are some of the emotions that you might think. The emotion that I always am happy about is that emotion of happiness. When I can make you laugh in the story, that brings me great joy. <laughs> so today, we're going to go far, far north. Far north to the Yukon Territory, which if you know where Alaska is, you'd be pretty close to the Yukon. And there's a beautiful river that runs clear through all of the Yukon and it dumps into the Bering Sea. It's a very long, long river. And this is a highway for many people. They put their boat in there so they had a water highway and they'd visit along the way. Now, once in my life, I was really having struggles in my life as everybody does. And I was suffering. I was suffering both emotionally and mentally. I was feeling sad. So I went to visit a very special couple in our community and their names were Hannah and Joan Nitro. I went to visit them and I shared my sorrows with them. Nitro, I want you to remember this. Can you say that? Nitro. Nitro means wolverine. Wolverine is a nasty little animal, fur-bearing animal. And he's so stubborn that in the winter, his fur doesn't get frost on it because he's so nasty. Anyways, nitro means wolverine. And I should tell you that Joe Nitro was not nasty. He was very kind. Him and his wife, Hannah, were very kind. So when I went to them 
and they told me to sit down and have the tea with them. And then they gave me something to eat, which is the tradition amongst all indigenous people. When you visit, they feed you. And after we had a little something to eat, they wanted to tell me the story, so they began the story. They said, years ago, years ago, there was a couple. And I don't know why, but they live all by themselves out in the bush. Usually, people, old people always live with their kids or their grandchildren would take care of them. But this old couple were all by themselves. And that winter, winter came too quick. It froze, it snowed. So they were not able to get in enough fish from the lake and the river. The snow covered all the berries. They weren't able to pick enough berries to last the winter. And the caribou took a different trail. They were starving. They were very hungry. The old woman was worse than the man, the old grandpa. Her stomach was swollen up from being so hungry. And her eyes were all sunken in and her arms were very skinny. And she always had a bad headache. They just drank tea. They made tea from, it's called Hudson Bay tea, they would just drink tea. That's what they were surviving on is just tea, hot tea. Every day they got up, they offered prayers. They begged the creator, please give us food. Now I should tell you, there's a very special bird in our tradition, in our culture, and it's called the Canadian Jay. And we call this Tsiki, this little bird. He's called the hunter bird. Now you might think to yourself that he was the hunter, but he wasn't. My grandmother in the fall times when she would hear this jay making its noise, she would say, feed him. You hear him? He speaks our language. He said, give me fat, give me fat. And I listened, but I didn't hear him say those words. So I would, take some fat from my grandmother, which she had cut off from some meat that she had, and I would place it out in the smokehouse. And wouldn't you know, next day or maybe a couple days later, here some young man had arrived with some meat from my grandma. You see, that's a hunter bird, she said. Well, you know this old couple I was telling you about? The old man was very worried for his wife. Every day they make prayers. Every day he went out, he didn't get anything. No tracks, nothing. There's just wind blowing across the ice. This one morning he got up. Him and his wife had tea and he started to get ready to go out. He didn't walk too far and he was weeping. He was crying because he remembered in his mind's eye how his wife looked. Her belly was swollen. Her eyes were all sunken in. And when he was finished crying, he looked out on the ice and what did he see there? He saw a little bird jumping up and down, making noise. <laughs> so that old man took his small bow out and he put the string on the bow and bent it and put the string on the bow as a bird bow. He had the other big bow for large animals, but he took the bird bow and he got the little bird. Oh. He gave thanks. He brought that little bird home for his wife. He cleaned it for her. She cooked it. She made soup. They say when you 
are really hungry like that, starving. You mustn't eat heavy. You know, if you come to a big feast, you shouldn't eat a lot. You should just drink juice and tea, water, soup. They say that if you eat too heavy, you might even stop your heart. So they drank soup. His, her husband ate a little bit of meat just to taste it because he hadn't eaten meat for a long time. That night they slept so well. In the morning they got up, they made tea. She heat up that soup for her husband. He had a little bit of soup. He's going to go out on the land again to see if he could get a moose or get some animals, you know, for food. They made prayers. And again, he went out. It's pretty barren land, but not even 20 minutes away. What does he see there? First of all, he thinks he's hallucinating. He doesn't think that he is really seeing this. It's a cow moose and a calf. <laughs> he gave thanks. He got his big bow, arrow, He took down the cow, the mother, moose. And then he gave thanks. Now he had to take the calf down too. This is a two-year-old calf. Because without the mother, that baby will die. So he took mercy and took that calf down as well. Oh boy. He can't believe his, his gift that he received in answer to a prayer. And what he did is he gutted it out, skinned it out, and he took the heart of the cow, moose. Heart is a very good food. This is the food is like a delicacy for elders. When young men want to be a good hunter, the first moose that they take down, the first moose that they kill, they have to take the heart of that moose to the oldest woman. And this will guarantee her prayers. This will guarantee that they will be always good hunters. So he took the heart home to his wife. And what usually happens, you know, when people live on the land like that, they live in a skin house. So they, if they shoot something, take down some game for food, they move their whole camp over there instead of bringing all the food home. So he didn't have very far to move his camp. But he brought that home. His wife couldn't believe it. She gave thanks. Oh, she was just, everybody was probably just rejoicing on the other side for these old people in the spirit world. So she started to cook the boil, the heart. He's gonna make a heart soup. <laughs> you ever have heart soup? They boiled it. Just before they're gonna eat that, she went you know, in the morning when he was leaving, she tried to give him meat. But he said to her, no, you have that. And he left without it. So just before they're getting ready to eat the heart meat soup, she went over and she pulled out these little tiny little drumsticks, which he refused to take. She said to her husband, you know what? We have to eat this one first. After all, he gave up his life for us. And now we're going to survive. He was so taken by his wife's sacrifice. She never ate all day waiting for him. And so this is the story.
And this is a story that was given to me by the Nitro family. And I want to know who amongst you understands the teachings of this story, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, and the physical. There's many teachings in this story. So I don't know how people can just unmute themselves, Cindy. Uh, yes, they can raise their hand if they want to talk, and they can also use the chat if they prefer. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. whatever works best for them. Okay, well, I got six chats in here. <laughs> what does it say in the chat? <laughs> this is a new word for us, eh? Chat. <laughs> Mrs. Always, oh, so happy you can join us. We're coming to listen to the stories all week, and we have two new students starting with us. Well, uh, who's ever with the children there with they got a little TP? Madeline. Madeline, Madeline. <laughs> Hi, Madeline. So what did you learn from the story? Okay. What did you learn? Did you like the story? Did you like it? Or a little shy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I ask you, Madeline, because when we're teaching children, children are trying to sort out all kinds of things, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess it's important as teachers or caregivers, parents, that we know what it is or try and know what it is that they're learning. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So what did you learn? What was, if we can just maybe ask all, all the people there. If I asked you one word that you have gained, or just give me one uh, a word, one word answer, what was the story about, Ruth? Hope. Hope. It's about hope. It's about hope. Okay. Somebody else, Miss Chloe. Linda Radford, what did it mean to you? One word. Is anybody there? You have to unmute yourself. So Linda said love in the chat. Oh, love, and okay. The inversion says giving thanks. Giving thanks. And how about you, Cindy? What did it mean to you? Uh, sharing. Sharing. Oh, and we have kindness from Bethany Grolo. Kindness. Yes. Kathy. Uh, Miss Chloe says that Leonardo liked the hunter in the story. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and Katie Compass says sharing and family. Sharing and family. Okay. Anybody else? Dean, what did you think? The idea of giving, uh, recognizing that nature provides. Mm -hmm. Good point. Toshiba. For me, it was the idea of taking care of each other. From like animals, humans. Yeah. Um, and I'm also really happy about heart soup. <laughs> You've had some, I take it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Yes. Wonderful. Louise, we have something else from Miss Chloe. She says that in her class, Isabel liked the bird that gave meat. Uh, oh. We had food, but it didn't. God gave them food. Isabel is thankful to God. Oh. And Katie Compass is saying the hunter's kindness in killing the calf. Yes, there's another level of kindness. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
So as you can see, there are many, there's many layers. And throughout the telling of this story, you are also learning different cultural practices of these people. And what really was important to me when I heard this story, and Ruth said right at the top, is that I, I realized that this is the story about sacrifice. And certainly throughout this pandemic, we're acknowledging that we must sacrifice for others. And when you sacrifice, you make something sacred. It becomes a sacred, loving thing. So that's, that's what I learned from my dear old friends who are now in the spirit world, of course, it's many years ago. And um, to acknowledge that we're all, we're all together and to be together is guarantees, I guess, uh, our survival. And that's definitely one of the teachings of the indigenous people is that you have to stay in harmony with each other and work with each other. It's like uh, Dean said, you know, that nature provides and also we provide for each other. We're part of that whole scheme of things. Is there any other questions that other people have for me? I realize I have five minutes left, so I'm open to questions. No questions? I don't see anything in the chat. Okay. All right. I wanted Thank to- Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. I just wanted to say that I've uh, offered and I told this to at the beginning is that I offer this uh, story to my mother uh, today who gave birth to me today all those many years ago so um, yeah so this anything that I do this week is for her my uh, very encouraging loving mother mm -hmm. bye bye children <laughs> bye -bye. thank you Louise. thanks everyone for being there bye, bye. okay bye bye Take care.